So hello guys and let us talk about decolonizing Africa. Yes, so part of the decolonization agenda starting from as soon as African countries got their independence was to change the names that were given by the colonial masters because a lot of times those people just didn't care. They, they just named you after uh, whatever they felt was cool because as far as they were concerned they discovered your land they discovered they discovered you so they kind of discovered africa and they named us africa named everything just about what it was and did you know there was an african country called nyasa land as a matter of fact i really didn't know because that country is today called uh, malawi and we have a lot of other african countries that have followed suit to change the names that were given by the colonial masters you know there was a uh, Botswana land which is now a uh, botswana there was upper volta which is now burkina faso you know there was tanganyika <laughs> that's a country that is today called tanzania and of course the gold coast ghana right so I actually think that the african version of the names are you know way cooler than these crazy names that african countries were given you know like nigeria which as a matter of fact is still nigeria <laughs> you know that kind of explains a lot of things about the country you know so lots of african countries have retained the names that were given and a few have changed theirs and some of the african countries are taking these a step further by changing names of uh, symbols of structures of places you know streets airports even whole cities and today i want to beam the spotlight on south africa about a month ago the south african government changed the names of hundreds yeah hundreds of places of structures so top of the list is the city port Elizabeth. Well, kind of makes me think of Port Harcourt in Nigeria. You know, there are all of these ports established uh, here and there. And if you have a port something in your country, uh, do well to let me know in the comment section. Let's see how far governments and people are uh, taking the step to reclaiming, you know, places that used to have native names but now bear names of people who are long dead. And, you know, the exciting thing about changing the name of Port Elizabeth, it's because it's not the Elizabeth you know, it's not named after the Queen of England. As a matter of fact, I had to do a quick search about that and here is what I found. It's right here on my phone. You see, so Port Elizabeth was established in 1820 as a brief settlement around uh, blah, 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 and it was incorporated as a town in 1861. It was named by Sir Ruffin Duncan, the acting governor of the Cape Colony for his deceased wife, Lady Elizabeth. You know, so Lady, <laughs> so Port Elizabeth was named after a dead woman, yeah? And it took over a hundred years to have that corrected. Well, better late than never, but sorry, Lady Elizabeth, uh, the city shall no longer be called after you because that land belongs to the, the Kosa people, right? And it's only fair that Port Elizabeth is called by a Kosa name. And uh, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing Kosa properly, but I'm going to do my best to pronounce the new name of the city that used to be called Port Elizabeth. And that city is today called... <sighs> Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not South African, so I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing this. So the new name for the city that used to be Port Elizabeth is called Mobeha. Yes, it's called Mobeha. I hope I got that right. So if you're South African, do let me know if I got the pronunciation well. And yeah, I should go practice that. Uh, yeah, I should learn some African languages too, man. This thing is so exciting. Because I have to put this on my bucket list. I have to go to Ngobeha one of those days. So, are there city structure symbols in your country having their names changed? Are there movements to have this actualized? Uh, do let us know in the comment section. Let's talk about this. Do you think this is a welcome development? Is this something we should keep up? You know, do you think uh, we should pressure on African leaders? to follow suit and copy this beautiful example from the South Africans and restore 
proper African names to African cities and locations. Yeah. So we can have Port Elizabeth in Africa and not have Mbeha in Switzerland or in the or in the United Kingdom or somewhere else. So I think this is a really cool thing and I think I should end this video here so we can talk more in the comment section. See you there.